What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 13 of Road to Pro. Man, it's a long ride. My body's starting to feel the long ride, too, I guess, because uh, we've been doing this for quite some time now. But, you know, today we're back on the couch. So that means we're back in the home gym. We're at Raw War Zone today. Um, we took you guys on a little bit of a different type of journey last week outside of the gym. Well, really inside of the gym, but in a different gym, right? We took you guys all the way to College Station to see the Phil Heath Classic. We took you guys down in the, at CE King High School to see Nike Invite Tournament. We took you guys to Tascacita to see the boys practice. So we took you on a little bit of a ride around town. Um, and also, we even looked at some houses together. So last week's episode was nothing to do with bodybuilding. Uh, it was really just to show you guys that my life is not a bodybuilder. So that's what makes this road to pro so much more intriguing and interesting in my mind because I'm not the guy who sits in the gym all day and lifts weights. Like I've told you guys from the start, my life is really busy. I have a fiance, three children, job and <laughs> training, coach basketball, now looking for a house. I mean, life is tough. But with that being said, I had this conversation with one of my clients yesterday. It's all about what you prioritize, right? Like, because so many people say that they don't have time to do things. That's just an excuse. You can make time for whatever you want. So right now it is 7.13 in the morning. We're filming at 7.13 on a Wednesday morning, this Road to Pro series, because you have to make time, right? I've already trained a client at 5.30. I've already done my fasted cardio, and now we're filming at 7.13. So you can do whatever you want to do, but it's all up to you on how bad you really want it. So on this week's Road to Pro, I mean, really, um, I'll give you guys a quick update on where we're at on prep. And we have a couple question and answers just from, I posted on Instagram. Um, if anyone had any questions, we would answer them. And then we're gonna hit a back workout today. So prep updates. This is like the whirlwind, right? Two weeks ago, I told you guys I wasn't doing universe. I was doing team master and collegiate. Well, then another wrench came thrown in. Um, NPC this year decided that for the master's class, that no longer would it be top two, uh, get their pro card at any show. So I wasn't going to do universe because only number one got their pro card and that team master and collegiate has always been top two. Well, with them throwing that wrench in there that it's only number one at every show, I might as well jump in early. So back to universe we go. So we are officially eight and a half weeks out. Eight and a half weeks out from universe, which is July 3rd in South Carolina. So that is the plan as of today. I've already booked my hotel. I'm booking my flights tonight. So I think it's a done deal. That's where we're going. So my mentality hasn't changed at all because I've always said that I don't want to go pro as a second place winner. I want to go pro as winning my class and competing for the overall. So now I have to do that <laughs> to go pro and masters. But I will also do open this year at Universe um, just because why not throw my chances in there even more. So that's kind of the prep update on that. Um, as far as diet goes, like right now, I'll be honest with you guys, I feel like shit. I'm pretty blah just because we're carb cycling. So we're doing three low days, one high day. Um, so that's pretty tough just because I'm not used to it. I've never really done it before. So these low days, I don't have a lot of energy. I'm just kind of blah. Yesterday was another low day. So tomorrow we have check-ins with Ariel and we have a high day. So we'll see what that looks like. But the lowest weight that we've seen in the last few weeks was yesterday at 216.2. So the weight's coming down, definitely getting tighter, feeling better in that aspect, but feeling worse <laughs> physically just because I'm just tired. Uh, also, these early mornings like today, alarm goes off at 4.30, doesn't make things much easier. But I'm not complaining because I volunteered to do this. Like I told you guys a few episodes ago, I mean... No one's making me do this. No one makes you do this. If this is what you do, you do it on your own. So there's no bitching going on here. Just stating facts, but we still grinding for sure. So let's get to these questions and answers. All right. This question here, I mean, there's really, it's a funny question. What pre-workout do you take? I mean, if you guys don't know the answer to this one by now, then you guys must never watch Road to Pro. But I will show you anyways. <laughs> it's Evo Gen, right? EVP, Extreme and O. Take it every single week. Only one week of this Road to Pro have we taken something else. 
which we took bucked up two weeks ago just because this was out of commission. I didn't have any more. So that's what we take for pre-workout. All right, next question I have is, is it true I shouldn't eat after midnight? So that one right there is in my mind and in my science that I've discovered and looked up, it's falsehood. There's no timing on eating as far as how late you can eat. At the end of the day, obviously the heavier the meals are the later in the day, the more they're gonna sit on your stomach, the less time you might have to digest. So in the morning you might weigh in a little bit heavier compared to if you ate earlier because they would be already out of your system. But at the end of the day, it's all about calories in versus calories out. It's simplistic math. If you intake a thousand calories, then you need to burn off at least a thousand calories to be at maintenance. So that's simple math. All right, so it doesn't really matter about timing. Um, now timing gets a little bit more specific when you're in bodybuilding about when you eat your meals, like how close to workouts, things of that nature. So that does matter. Let's see, I have a few other questions here. All right, so what got you into lifting? So I don't think I've ever really answered this question. I kind of talked about my why on why I bodybuild, but never really why I got into lifting. So I was a collegiate athlete. I never was big into weights. I lifted because I had to, but never like really got into it. So I would say my daughter is now going to be 13. She was born 2007. So I would say, I guess late 2007, early 2008, I decided that I wanted to get in shape because, um, you know, my ex-wife at the time, she had just had a baby. No, I take that back. That's too old. That right there, that's a false story. Sorry. Um, at that point, I still was in decent shape because I played basketball every day, but I didn't really lift weights. So I, let's move forward. My son, when my ex-wife was pregnant with my son, 2011, okay, that's when it all began. 2011, my, wife had, my ex-wife had Xavier and I got up to like 265 pounds. Um, I showed you guys before the before and afters, but I got up to like 265. She had just had a baby, so we wanted to lose weight. So we decided to do Insanity. Yes, Sean T. Insanity is what started this whole thing. We did Insanity for 90 days and I lost like 30 pounds and I was feeling myself, but I still wasn't really where I wanted to be. So um, I always had a gym membership just to play basketball, but started going to LA Fitness on a regular basis with a friend of mine, transitioned to 24 hour fitness. We started lifting on a regular basis. Um, at that point I got a job offshore in Mozambique, Africa, and I joined, like I got some guys together who really didn't lift and we started lifting on a regular basis. It's funny because actually in my uh, time hop today was a, one of the pictures from eight years ago, which uh, I'll show you guys here shortly. Yeah, wow, things have changed. So that's kind of what got me into lifting is just that I wanted to start getting in shape because I really got myself really bad out of shape. And um, so I started that in 2011 and here we are today. Damn, we're talking about 10 years ago. <laughs> All right, so do your parents support this choice? So <clears throat> that's, that question is uh, also another one that kind of has been answered to a degree. So I grew up just me and my mom. Uh, my dad's been incarcerated for a long time. He actually gets out next year, but um, that's a whole different topic. So <clears throat> my mom was the biggest supporter of this actually um, when I first started it. But as you all know, like she passed away a few years ago. So that's my why on why I continue to do this. So yes, it was huge having the support system of my mom. Um, actually what I will do here, we'll give you guys a quick clip of the last clip that I have from my mom before my first show. So uh, she was just basically congratulating me. So we'll cue that up here. Hi Aslo. Um I like to say good luck to you. You put in a lot of hard work, and no matter the outcome, you'll always be my hero. Check out them guns, dog. I'm working on it. <laughs> but anyway, love you, son. Love you so much, and I'm so proud of you. And, and it does take a lot of dedication to do what you've done, and you're a great example for all of us. Love you, man. Good luck, school. Yeah, I look a little tired. Keep in mind, I did just get off the plane. With that being said, uh... Yes, I know that some people really deal with a lot of like parents, especially on the female side. A lot of parents do not support the choice of being in a bikini, bent over on stage in front of a lot of people. Um, so I can see where that one is definitely an issue, um, you know, but 
I really don't have an answer to tell you how to get around that one because I'm not a female and I don't have that issue. But I think if my daughter wanted to do it, I've been in the sport long enough that I wouldn't have an issue with it. Uh, so many, any mental health issues after shows like eating disorders wise and all of that. <laughs> That's a big one. Like I have a true story about that. Like I have, I, I do. I battle with body dysmorphia. So most athletes battle with body dysmorphia. And for those of you who don't know what really body dysmorphia is, it's just realistically where you see your body and you're disgusted by it, right? Um, you got to think about something. So you work really hard and really long for, I don't know, 12, 25, 50, however many weeks to get to this apex, this pinnacle of how great you can look. You're 3% body fat. I mean, you can't see, you can see every muscle anatomy chart. And literally a few days later, those cuts start to diminish. You start to hold water. Things start to not look as good. So in your mind, you look like shit. The common person's eyes, you look great. But body dysmorphia is real. So 2019, Maggie and I went to Pittsburgh Nationals. And we had booked a trip to Jamaica straight out of Pittsburgh. Um, just because we wanted to like kind of celebrate. It was our first international vacation. And it was like, let's celebrate the bodybuilding season because that's what we did. Went to Sandals, all inclusive. So all you can eat, all you can drink. We had a butler service. We like did it up. It was a great time. We were there for five days. So day one, I got onto the island or the resort and I was the hottest shit in fucking Jamaica, right? Like abs on point, shredded to the bone. I'm just coming off a show, a national show with that. Day five, not so much. I had been eating and drinking a lot, and I drank a lot of all the alcohol there is, has so much sugar in it, right? Because they're just trying to get you, you know, sugar and alcohol together, like, gives you headaches and you feel really buzzed, I guess. I don't know, whatever. But day five, went on an excursion. We came back. It was time to go to the pool. I went to grab my board shorts. I put them on, and what the hell is this? Something hanging over my shorts. I literally flipped out. Like I went back in the bathroom, I changed back into some other shorts and I came out in Maggie's, into basketball shorts. Maggie said, what are you doing? Where's your swim shorts? And I said, and I basically almost broke down and cried. And I was like, I look like shit. Like at the end of the day, like my, I we put on all this weight, we haven't worked out enough and now my shorts don't fit right and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, hold the fan. You're not about to ruin our last day of vacation because you want to flip out about this so it was so bad that I text my coach Kobe at the time and was like bro like what is going on and he was like relax enjoy your vacation we'll get back to work when you get home body dysmorphia is real so that's what I will say and I will tell you the way the biggest way to combat that is don't go on an eating binge post show eat for like a day or two and then clean it back up drink a lot of water flush your system out get back on the treadmill Bring things back down to normal levels because your body is like a sponge post show. You have deprived your body of so many nutrients, so much water, so much everything for so long that by the time that you get post show, dude, anything that you put in your body, it's holding on to for dear life. It's like thinking it's going to die. And that's why I say that, you know, being in a show, like people think that you're healthy because you look great. It's probably the most unhealthy state that your body's in ever. Right. So last question that I have here. It's a touchy topic. So in the MPC on the national stage, are a majority of athletes natural or not? <sighs> that question, no one really likes to answer. Like, that's like taboo in bodybuilding, but I'm just going to keep it real. No, they're not. Most athletes, if you're going to the national stage, are enhanced. Um, they're taking some type of anabolic steroids or something. So uh, that's just real, man. I would say, I, I don't have numbers. I don't research this stuff, but I would say it's got to be 90% or above of guys who are not natural athletes. So a natural athlete is a guy who takes nothing besides anything you can buy over the counter, you know, from GNC. So if you take anything besides that, don't give me this bullshit of I'm a natural athlete. I hear so many guys who take clean and all kind of stuff, and they say, I'm a natural athlete. You're not a natural athlete, bro. All right? I'll admit I'm not a natural athlete. Like, that's just that simple. Um, I was a natural athlete in 2017 when I first started this. And 
not today. All right, so a big analogy that I give people a lot of times is this. You're not gonna take a Honda to a Porsche race, right? So at the end of the day, I don't care what you do to that Honda, you could put whatever you want under that hood of that Honda. Unless you're putting a Porsche engine in there, you are going to lose a race every time. Okay, there's very far and few between athletes who have the genetic capability to compete on a national level at a natural state. There are a few, I know one. Actually a teammate of mine from Brotherhood, Lamar Vaughn, all kudos to my boy Lamar, he is an IFBB pro who is natural, okay? Um, I give him all the credit in the world because that's insane. Uh, but he has great genetics and he busts his ass every day, but he has heart conditions. So at the end of the day, he, that's what he, you know, that's what happens. But I mean, I'm not that guy. So yeah, I do take other things that you can't buy at the store. <laughs> so to answer that question, I would say no, uh, 90% of guys probably aren't natural, um, at that level. Now, at the local level, you will start to see a little bit more natural guys, but those guys, you can tell the difference. It's pretty obvious, realistically, if you look on stage, the guy who is really shredded but that big, he's probably a natural athlete. The guy who is really big and shredded, he's probably not. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty simple, right? Because the biggest thing with the difference in a natural athlete versus a non-natural athlete, rest and recovery time is shortened tremendously for the non-natural athlete. Also, you can gain muscle while dropping body fat, right? Because at the end of the day, your body, you're using supplements to help yourself make sure that you don't burn away muscle as you're dropping body fat. So most guys, as you lose weight, you lose muscle. Enhanced athletes don't do that. So I'm no doctor, I'm not gonna tell you what to take, so don't hit me up in the DMs and be like, hey, what do you take or what should I take? I can't, I'm not gonna give you any of that information, but I'm just gonna tell you that if you wanna compete at this sport in a high level, I mean, that's just what it takes. But I will give you this information. And I'll tell you this, and I tell anybody who asks about taking enhancements, reach your peak without them first. Like, get to the best that you can be without them first. Like, because there's no need to jump on some stuff and you've never even seen what your body can do, right? Because then all of a sudden, now you're dependent on that. And as soon as you take that away, what happens? So at the end of the day, reach your peak as a natural athlete, do the best that you can, see what your body can look like, and if that's not good enough, then go ahead and jump on whatever you need to jump on. I mean, that's my advice to you. I mean, that's what I did. 2017, I went on stage at freaking 191 pounds <laughs> at 6'2", and I got smacked. So that was my best. So that's the question that we have for today, um, you know, like, if you guys ever have any questions, you need some something answered, go ahead, shoot me a DM. I have no problem answering questions in the Road to Pro, right? Because this channel is not just so you guys can see me work out or see me do whatever it is. It's so that you can learn, you can get better, and you can see what it takes to hopefully become a pro. That's my goal, right? I want you guys to all watch and witness the steps that it takes to become a professional bodybuilder, IFBB pro, right? And when I say pro, I mean IFBB pro. No knock on GBO or anybody else who's a pro, but in my mind, it's IFBB pro or nothing. So, with that being said, it is now 7.30. The timing is perfect because I have a meeting for work at 8.30. So we're gonna knock out this workout in the next hour because I already knocked out my cardio. And we're gonna hit this back workout. Let's see what this back looks like at the end of the day. Um, and see if we got that pro back yet. We got eight and a half weeks to make it happen. So let's get on this pre-workout. So, you guys know what it is. The famous, like I said earlier, Evo Gin. I like this flavor though, this is Orange Mango Blast. It actually tastes pretty good. So. Let's get it. One thing that I, I never really talked about, and like, I don't know if you guys noticed, I always wear these grip things on uh, back days, right? So this is a Cobra grip. It's a uh, Amazon version of Versa grips. I'm cheap, I'm gonna buy whatever I can that works <laughs> that I don't have to pay full price for. But the key to these are, it takes the lift out of your forearms and out of your grips, so then that way you can really put into the muscle. So a lot of times when people are doing back, you're, 
back isn't actually exhausted. You've lost grip strength or your forearms are tired. So just a quick little tip, guys really wanna work your back, invest in some of these. Cobra grips are like $34.99, I think, on uh, Amazon. Versa grips are like $59.99. These quality-wise are just as good to me. I've had them for, I think this is my second pair I've had for like three years, cause I lost a pair. But never had anything go wrong with them. Pretty good quality. You guys see me use them every week. Just a little tip. <sighs> All right, so today we stick, most of the kicks I got is Jordans, but today is another Jordan. We got the Jordan 12 Taxis. Uh, this is a 2013 version. So, you know, most of my stuff is OG, but Jordan Taxi is one of my favorites, so actually, bro. And look, this is why, look at that. Right now, StockX 682. I mean, hey, kicks is life, baby. I go broke on kicks. I can probably get rich, sell all them clothes when I need to. <laughs> Carbs, heavy weight. This shit don't work together. All right, guys, that's episode 13 in the wraps. All right, thanks for joining. If you have any questions like I told you earlier, just shoot me, you can shoot me a text if you know me personally, a DM, comment below. I'll be glad to answer any questions next week in the next Road to Pro. Until then, see you guys next time. But like always, if you've already subscribed, thanks. If you haven't, three buttons in a row, like, subscribe, notifications, 10 a.m. every Sunday we come in live. Only a few more weeks. Originally, we were supposed to have 12 more episodes, but since the show got pushed forward, we're hoping to only go eight more. All right, we out.